Hey friends, Isaac here. It's Tuesday, December 14th. Welcome to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. This is the podcast where we live the dream of people of every nation, tribe and tongue, worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. Thank you for subscribing, reviewing and sharing the show. Kevin's newest book, Get to the Point, was an instant international bestseller. Get to the Point is available worldwide in paperback, hardback, ebook, and audiobook. It is a practical guide for passionately pursuing God's presence. Every guidance and provision you will ever need can be found today in the presence of God. Visit kevinwhite.us to read and gift Get to the Point and Kevin's first book, Audacious Generosity, today. Today, Kevin is joined by Temsa Labas of Nashville, North Carolina. Temsala is a sister in Christ, friend and board member for Global Hope India. Put your hands together and let's welcome Kevin and Temsala to today's show. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Living the Dream show. I'm Pastor Kevin. I'm here with my co-host, Temsala. How are you, sister? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great. And you have a beautiful couple you're about to introduce us to. But I want to welcome everyone watching on YouTube. We just waved at you. If you're listening wherever podcasts can be heard, we welcome you. Themsala, did you know 133 different countries listen in to the Living the Dream show? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, Amazing. you're your superstar, Risa. global, yeah. phenomenal um, host. And so uh, thank you for helping. But we champion the message out of Revelation 7, 9 through 12, that every nation, tribe, and tongue is before Jesus worshiping, proclaiming, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty and salvation belongs to the Lord. And we don't want to wait till we get to heaven to get comfortable with that. Uh, it is our prayer. Let it be on earth today as it is in heaven. And so I'm born and made in the USA. She's born and made in India. She has friends that are born and made in India as well with us today. Uh, but we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's many other countries than what you see represented even on the show. Uh, but we are so grateful to have this opportunity. We're going into, we're actually right in the middle of the holiday seasons. This is December the 14th, 2021. Can you believe 2021 is almost over? Wow. Yeah. I, <laughs> and we're about to head into 2022. Let us be some of the first to say Merry Christmas. Um, Merry happy Christmas. holidays. Yes. Merry is happy and Christmas is Christ's body. Uh, Christ Mass. Uh, if you're Catholic, you know the word Mass better than Protestants do at some point, sometimes. Uh, but um, when we say Merry Christmas, we are we are saying Happy Birthday, Jesus. Jesus is born, and we are wishing everyone a Merry Christmas, and we wish wish you a Merry Christmas. And I'm gonna let. Timsala just introduce us to today's topic and to our beautiful couple, but we're really just going to look at a conversation of, of just blending cultures. We've been talking on the show about going across the neighborhood, going next door, and just welcoming the foreigner, getting comfortable with people from different nationalities that are living around you, working around you, selling you gas, taking care of you as medical professionals, uh, and and everything in between. And we're just going to have a, a very uh, God-honoring conversation about how we can blend the cultures even in the holidays. Uh, Timsala, help us to meet our, our friends here and today's topic. Yes. yes, Kevin, thank you for the introduction. And um, today I just want to introduce my dear brother and sister, Asangla and Sumit. And they are such a blessing to our family and to all the people that they know. Mm. And I just, you know, want to just share them with our listeners, with everybody. And uh, just what a talented, godly family this family is. And I just, um, today, I just want to welcome Asangla and Sumit, and uh, I will let them tell uh, who they are in their own words. And I just want to say thank you for coming to the show, and we are so blessed 
to have you guys with us. And uh, today the discussion is about Christmas and the holidays that we all celebrate. And we all come from different cultures, different homes, the way we celebrate Christmas and all the holidays are different in different homes. And so mm-hmm. we just want to discuss on how uh, we have grown up celebrating those uh, holidays and the Christmas in our own homes and how um, we are you know, blending those with the the culture that we are in and what are the legacies, what are the things, traditions that we have taken it on and we want to pass it on to our children and what are the traditions that we want to say, okay, you know, we don't want to continue with that or what are the, the tra- traditions and legacies that we want to say, you know, this is something that we want to incorporate into our family and pass it on to our children. When we hope that in the days to come, our kids will do the same as well. And so it's it's a question that I'm going to throw out to Asanga and Sumit. You know, just share from your heart. What was it like for each one of you to grow up in your home celebrating Christmas or any holidays? Uh, so I leave it to Asanga and Sumit. Yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for having us on your podcast. I remember, uh, was it just a few months ago that Damsala was telling me about this podcast that she was going to be like, you know, participating and partnering with. And uh, it's been um, an honor and a privilege to see watch it grow mm-hmm. and that we are on it today. And um, Kevin, I've heard so much about you as well. (laughs) It's been a pleasure to finally meet you in person Mm. about a week ago. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for all that you both are doing and um, for the message that we're uh, bringing across uh, the airwaves. Mm. (laughs) So um, where do we start? Well, just as a quick introduction, I mean, we're we're, we're a, and we've been married 20 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have three children, uh, 15, 13 and 11. Uh, two boys and a girl in that order. I, um, by day, I work uh, in a tech company. We make software for banks and credit unions, and uh, we homeschool. So yes. there's there's just a, a, a lot of action in the household and uh, in our lives. But really, our, our passion is is to know God and make Him known. Hopefully, it reflects in everything we do, including family life. And in fact, especially family life, because uh, we do believe that marriage and family is the launching pad for the gospel and there's there's really no better witness than uh, a family that's that's genuine and and transparent Mm -hmm. and you know this is who we are this is what we do and here's the grace of god Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um so with that i mean you you grew up in a in a christian family so i think (laughs) you have a little more tradition yeah Yeah, I, i have a very different background. Why don't you start and then I can okay. add yeah. some layers. Let me, let me jump in here and just introduce to the audience your backgrounds real quickly as I am learning as well. Uh, so uh, Asangla is third generation Christian. And uh, which means her grandparents came to know the Lord, then her parents came to know the Lord, then she came to to know the Lord. Uh, And Sumit is first generation Christian. He was actually raised in a Hindu family uh, in mainland India, and they met in mainland India. She's from Northeast India. Uh, We've described that before because uh, that's where Timsala is from as well. If you hold your hand up, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see the hand there and my thumb. If you hold the back of your hand up, uh, the thumb comes out and that gives a little bit of a shape of the country of India. And the thumb is that Northeast section. There's actually seven states up there. Many of them are predominantly Christian states. And um, so that's where Thimsala's from. That's where Asangla's from. But then they met, she and Samit met in Pune, India, in mainland India. And um, and so that gives you just a little bit of a reference, uh, because as we're talking about uh, living out the gospel and, and blending culture, even that has happened in their family. So now let's hear the rest of the story there. So go ahead, Asangla. That's right. So uh, <clears throat> growing up, 
celebrating traditions and Christmas, you know, since we're starting with the holidays and we're in December, it's like, it was a very, in my family growing up, it was a very community based celebration. If you do a little bit of research um, in the northeastern part of India, and especially the state where we come from, Nagaland, uh, there, are, there are tribes. And each tribe have their own way of uh, getting together with their tribal dialects. So I come from the Ao tribe, which is one of the major tribes uh, in my state. And on Christmas day, we would just all get together for a Christmas service. It, it didn't matter whether it fell on a weekday or a weekend. On that day, we would go, get together. We would all go into uh, the church building, but after a while, it got so big that they had to uh, rent out these huge like soccer or public arenas so that they could accommodate everyone coming in so that people wouldn't were standing on the parking lot or you know outside the building so anyway it became a time where they would you know just have a, um, a short ceremony where they would sing worship songs hymns actually be more specific and there would be a pastor who would come and give the exhortation or the message a very short and sweet one mm -hmm. but right after that they would have prayer and then they would basically give away food in small packets right in those banana leaves with rice and some kind of delicacy mm -hmm. which was mostly <laughs> pork <laughs> pork is in Nagaland so uh, and we would all either eat there this was like years ago I don't know how they do things now but and we would just have this huge community celebration. Now, coming back to my own family tradition, my mom and dad are both from huge families. So we had lots of cousins. So we would just get together. It was a very family oriented kind of a thing. Mm. So I remember growing up, you know, it's a very different tradition back home. I remember we used to decorate the house a little bit, but it was not so much about making the tree or, you know, decorating that stuff. It was more about, family, food, community. I think those mm -hmm. were the three things that came up mm -hmm. and celebration. And it turns out that one of my dear cousins is actually born on Christmas day. So we would even have a birthday party in the middle <laughs> of all of that. Like, you know, so it was about, again, wearing new clothes, going to, you know, the service and just celebrating and, you know, celebrating Christ mm -hmm. uh, as his, you know, birthday. Uh, mm -hmm. home growing up so that's how for me that's how it started over the years but when I left home to as an adult either to go back to college and then of course now that we're married things have evolved and we'll mm -hmm. get to that after I guess Sumit shares his yeah story. so yeah. meanwhile in the rest of India mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so you have to remember that uh, Christianity in India is uh, often considered a foreign religion mm -hmm. although we you know more we know that it's it's more of a Middle Eastern religion than, than a Western religion per se. Really, for for most Indians in in the mainland or in the you know not from Nagaland or any of the, the, the Christian communities, uh, Christmas was considered a an excuse to party and drink and and revel mm -hmm. and and just have fun. So growing up for me, uh, Christmas was just you know a, a holiday that these Christians celebrate so that they can get drunk and and you know indulge in debauchery so it, it wasn't really a special event for us um obviously for for hindus uh diwali is a, is a big festival uh, the, yeah, the hindu new year for muslims it's it's the end of ramzan uh, and eid uh, which are big big festivals so uh, i think being in that pluralistic society we, we learned to respect all these big big days and in fact uh, christmas in Hindi is often called Bada Din or the big day. And I, I always wondered why. And it wasn't until after I really uh, got to know uh, Christ for who he is rather than what uh, our interpretation or, or our representation of him is that uh, I understood why it's such a big deal that you know, he came to earth as a baby and, and not as a, uh, you know, in, in many of the Hindu mythologies, a savior comes in this, you know, uh, knight in shining armor with, with all the power and, you know, destroying evil in one swoop. But he came as a baby, humble, born, um, really like someone, if you've been to India, you see these people living on the streets. You know, he came in that humble uh, circumstance. Uh, but obviously it wasn't until much later that I understood the gravitas of, of that whole event. But growing up, it was Christmas was just never something to celebrate per se. It's, it's more of an excuse to have 
a party. You know, so that was my my context yeah. coming in. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. coming in, and then over the years, obviously, once I uh, I received Christ, uh, Christmas became first of all an internal celebration. That you know, and, and me being a very analytic person, I mean, my first thing was was Jesus really born on twenty fifth December? Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it, you know, no one knows when exactly he was born, but you know, we needed at least my rationale, we needed to pick a date, we picked the date, it didn't, didn't matter how it came along, but hey, this is it, right? Um, and it became an internal celebration first, just a reminder to to come back to the beginning and say, yes, Jesus came to die for our sin, uh, he was resurrected and gave us the Holy Spirit, but it began with that humble circumstance. It didn't, it, it didn't begin with this you know, glorious late entry and, and you know, with pomp and, and gala, but mm-hmm. in that humble circumstance. So for me, it was an internal celebration as a church community in, in Pune and, and Bombay. It was more of an outreach mm. because during uh, the December <coughs> holidays, people are a little more open mm-hmm. because they say, oh, there's something called Christmas. What, you know, tell me more. It was an op- opportunity for us to talk about the Lord and with a little more openness than regular times Mm -hmm. right yeah so um as a church community that's what we did we we put up like a you know i had a little band we we put up like a rock show and Mm -hmm. you know we we had skits and uh we went out to the streets to the slums distributing food and having mini services outside so that was my my context of christmas before we got Mm -hmm. married and you know yeah (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Sangma has mentioned about how, as Christians in places like Nagaland, we celebrated uh, Christmas. It was all community. It was community getting together. And I remember, you know, going to the villages as well. They have three services on a day, and it starts on the twenty fourth. And some uh, villages, or even some churches in Nagaland, they start on. Starting 23rd, I think, they start celebrating Christmas and it goes on until New Year's. And so uh, a lot of feasting and what I can, you know, what reminds me of the Christmas that we celebrate in our hometown is um, more like the way we celebrate Thanksgiving here and with a lot of family just eating and just fellowshipping and it just being thankful. And that's what I think about, you know, as we matured more and as we are exposed more, there are so many things that have transition in between. And so what are the things that you have seen that has, you know, transition from that kind of a setting, from that kind of a background to how it is now? Because, you know, in a lot of ways that instead of the church or the body of Christ presenting Christ to the world, it is more like the church has bought the world, world's idea of what the birth of Christ is. And so, you know, what, what are the transition in, from your side, you know, what are the transitions that you have seen and that you have participated, but over the years now you're looking at it and saying, mm, "I'm not. I don't want to do that." Mm. That's a good, yeah. That's actually a very good question yes. because after we got married, we we started our life together in the U.S. I mean, we we've never been married in any other country. So, <laughs> <laughs> so although we were married in India, but we never really lived our married life out uh, long term in any other place other than the US. And the first few Christmases, um, it was it was almost a culture shock, just just the <laughs> the commercial aspect of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all the decorations. And it was all good. I mean I'm 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 not bashing it because it was but it was just so different, you know, sometimes to the point of just, you know, audaciousness. It's like, wow, I mean you would do that for Christmas, mm-hmm. you know, like 50 million lights. And, you know, it was, 
and and that's you know it was a little overwhelming to be honest you know the gift giving was great and but we started discussing you know what once we have children i mean what what traditions do we want to pass down mm. and uh like for example i didn't grow up with a tree in our house i mean we, we had mm-hmm. you know some holy basil and and house plants but you'd never bring a whole tree into the house mm-hmm. uh, and then you know dump it back out um so so i think over the years we just you know started taking things off and and adding things of our own uh and as the kids came along and they got older um we we started doing that a lot more so for example we came to a point where where we're like do we really need a tree <laughs> because mm-hmm. we do enough you know because uh, one of the explanations given to me was well you have the tree you do things together decorate it together it's a great fun time and we're like we do that a lot i mean <laughs> for, you know through the year i mean so it, again it wasn't a religious decision it wasn't a you know theological decision you know it was just do we need the tree and we're like no we don't and we we felt that for a couple of years we got caught in, into the whole hype of oh we got to get the perfect tree we got to you know <laughs> fraser fir or you know it's it's got to be 5.5 feet tall because of you know blah 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 you got to go to this farm and get it and <laughs> it just became such a big deal and and we're like what are we doing here mm-hmm. <laughs> so so this one year we said you know we, we're not going to have a tree and and it was so funny because uh, i think i was more okay with it than you were mm. <laughs> and she she was driving down uh rollsville and she saw a sign that said free christmas trees <laughs> so she got it she's like it was free yeah, it <laughs> and was i got two of them yeah. <laughs> so we had two trees one year so, and and it was just hilarious so it, it was like you know what we're we're having fun with this let's let's enjoy it let's add things let, let's take things out uh what we also started exploring uh and one of my good friends talked about uh how um the christian tradition certain things like you know things like lent things like uh you know the advent and things that are at least for me are very anglican very anglo western mm-hmm. christian traditions that really I, i don't connect with at all i mean it's mm-hmm. like yeah whatever and i think most of uh, the eastern uh, hemisphere christians in the, in the eastern hemisphere don't really connect with that aspect as much unless you're from uh, like a mainline uh, church but in general we just never grew up with that but uh, he got me thinking it's like well what traditions uh, do we as christians have the privilege of having but we don't quite celebrate and instead of staying at you know the the medieval times mm-hmm. like let's go deeper i mean let's let's go back to our christian roots which which is really judaism and and see what some of the things that the lord gave us to celebrate mm-hmm. and you know we kind of started exploring the uh, the feasts of the lord mm-hmm. and Jewish just just our our you know research and studying it it's like jesus never told us not to celebrate those feasts and in fact he celebrated them while he was walking on the earth and just digging into mm-hmm. that a little more mm-hmm. and the prophetic significance of each of those feasts that mm-hmm. play out in the new testament mm-hmm. and we're like wow this is like a treasure trove here mm-hmm. so sure. over the past 2 3 years we've been digging into that a little more yeah. and realizing that hey you know we can celebrate those feasts we can bring some of those traditions back and it doesn't have to be done in that you know uh, uh what i call the 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 full jewish way I mean, you know where where we kind of try too hard <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. but just yeah. just make it part of our lives and and just you know celebrate the feast of the tents mm-hmm. uh, celebrate the feast of the trumpets and and uh and make that part of our yearly celebration through the year and you know what christmas just happens to be there on december 25th let's use that to celebrate as well mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. i know it's it's a lot we we shared a lot we're, we're still exploring we're still um yeah. you know year by year i think every year our christmas has been different yes, mm-hmm. it has so been there's yeah. been a few common themes yeah. like food yeah i there's, think the food mm-hmm. is the consistent one <laughs> there's a lot of food and mm-hmm. friends and, and family friends. Yeah. and we actually pray every year and ask the lord okay who do you want us to invite 
Mm-hmm. And it's, it's usually people that don't have families close by or mm-hmm. uh, friends that we haven't seen in a long time. And we really ask the Lord, okay, how should we, not just how should we celebrate, but who should we celebrate this time with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to jump in here. That's a great question. Uh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, and I want to invite you back next week because we're not going to get finished today. But this today has really brought out some very significant points. Point number one that I'm taking away from today is that Christmas can mean a lot of different things to different people. And that's okay. Uh, we're not here to try to cookie cut everybody's Christmas experience into, into one experience. But then the second point is, if we're not careful, we can lose sight of the true meaning of Christmas. We can make it just a very fun holiday and really uh, miss the birthday uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of the presence of God into our lives. And in doing so, even, even as we've heard from Submit, the Christians can actually be a very effective witness to the celebration of Christmas or, unfortunately, a a very distracting witness to the true meaning of Christmas. And so we want to make sure that we are encouraging ourselves and everyone in the audience to truly capture the meaning of Christmas in your in your home, in your celebration, and with with uh, others. That that last question that you just asked is an appropriate question for every one of us. Who can we invite in to the Christmas celebration this year? And so we're going to come back to that next week, and I'll see you next week on the Live in the Dream Show. God bless you all. God bless. Thank you for listening to the Living the Dream Show with Kevin White. Find the complete archive of all episodes at kevinwhite.us or subscribe for free through your favorite podcast player and never miss an episode. This program is copyright Kevin White International, all rights reserved. Each week we bring you a message of living the dream as people of every nation, tribe and tongue worship Jesus together on earth today as it already is in heaven. Remembering the gift of God's presence through Jesus Christ is accessible to everyone. Join us again next week for Living the Dream with Kevin White. Living the Dream with Kevin White.